الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أهبت في السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله جميعا May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with thabat, bless us with the suwab. And may Allah azza wa jal bless us to benefit from those affairs which are beneficial from our religion. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala protect us from going astray. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. Allah azza wa jal says fi kitab al-kareem, ya ayu ladhina amanu ittaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum Muslimun. Allah Azza wa Jal said to Kitab al Kareem, O you who believe, fear Allah as much as you can, or the full taqwa. You know, do your best to give full fearing of Allah Azza wa Jal. And don't die except in a state of Iman. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us to die in a state of Iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us in a state of strong iman and adhering to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all of our shortcomings and guide us. A question or a comment was posed, a couple of comments, and we're going to address them. Normally, I don't, uh, I address occasional comments because there's so many comments. But this one uh, from the SP Leaks crew, uh, one of the comments was a negative reaction to one of my minhaj sessions uh, of Ustad Abu Safiya Al Maliki Hafidullah Ta'ala because he was talking about Ikhwani uh, Dawah and also uh, talking about some of the misconceptions that are out there with regards to, uh, you know, nationalism and nationalistic ideologies being compatible with Islam. Uh, and especially, and, and some of the other things. There was many things that were discussed. So the commenter said, this whole conversation is due to a complete and embarrassingly ignorant understanding of what was said in the first place. Sorry, but this is a waste of time and full of S-pubs type hateful rhetoric. They would agree with this nonsense, pure sensationalism, exaggeration, outright deviation of original points mentioned by Fetches, features, I think. Uh, wallahi, pure joke after the amazing interview with Dr. Baker. This is a total joke and way off the mark. This is why people are sick and tired of this black and white dogmatism that is so literal and based upon ignorance and digging into the intentions of people. Wallahi, this is why many turn away from those who look religious and feign knowledge, but then be so off the mark of weighing up matters. Wallahi, embarrassing at least find out the intention of what was said before jumping into wild speculations and delusional conclusions, sad times, if this is called Salafia. So it's a pretty sharp, uh, uh, inviting comment there. First, I'll just say that I believe the commoner is actually guilty of a lot of the things that they are accusing us of doing. And, and I'll mention that first, number one, we see that this is very negative speech. It's not, uh, uh, that's fine to disagree. And if I had a disagreement, that's why you don't see Khalid Green posting on Ashadis uh, or Sufis or or uh, any other people's uh, websites and things like this in the YouTube pages. If I have a disagreement with someone, uh, then we would maybe deal with that behind closed doors unless it was a refutation of something that is open and out there of someone whose usul is... Uh, differs with that of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'a. So this, I find this to be kind of uh, a bit hostile in its uh, presentation. Secondly, we also see that this person, so it's a lot of negative, and they assume, which is very interesting, subhanAllah, yes, I'm aware of what the brother in features, uh, you know, what was said. Okay, I heard uh, a lot of what he said and found that there was a lot of methodological errors there. However, that podcast really had very little to do with him. So this is very interesting that you would make this accusation, accusation about our intentions. We address some of those things, 
but we addressed it. Why? Because it's on a wider scale. There's a lot of du'at and others who are claiming that uh, nationalism, that this is, you know, with, with the scholars, what it's referred to in Arabic as qomiya, that this is jayz, that this is okay. Okay. And there's a, a lot of problems. Also, our brother made many errors, which were very clear, very clear methodological that his istidlal, I never heard this ever from any scholar. I've never read this from any book and I've read lots of books, studied with lots of, I could say probably, I don't know that I've sat at their feet and I'm not using this to brag, but I'm just saying, so I listened to a lot of durus in the books of Muhammad ibn Wahhab. I never heard his istidlal that our brother made. So I don't know where this is coming from. And what we say as a principle, when we talk about uh, the religion, we usually point to what the ulama say, uh, who preceded you in those statements? So this is the problem when we get so emotional. It doesn't mean the brother doesn't have a, a, some good points, but there were some glaring errors and it's better. You know, I think this is very valuable in that people, when they're speaking with things related to the religion, if they haven't studied, and I don't know what his full background is as far as studying, but it's a good idea to run it by some students of knowledge. I, I would think that's a very reasonable um, reasonable uh, suggestion that it's a good idea when you have these emotional things because everyone has access. It's so democratic now, the, um, the access to social media. We can all pump out stuff. You know, There are so many people speaking about Islam who don't know nothing about Islam or don't know anything about Islam. And then there's people who have a little bit of knowledge, but everyone has a viewpoint and everyone has a microphone and a nice camera and a nice studio. So it's better, no doubt. I think we can safely say this and probably agree that when we, we speak, we should speak with knowledge. And secondly, we should also speak, uh, you know, if we don't have the knowledge about some issues, then, you know, maybe consult with a student of knowledge or run it by them before you publish it out there because now you've put yourself out there. And this is in accordance with the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Karim, subhanahu wa ta'ala, qal, fasalah li dhikri, in kuntum la ta'lamun. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. Because no doubt, without going into detail, I didn't want to put out a refutation. I, I told the brother myself that we could maybe, uh, you know, maybe in the future, have some time, do a podcast and talk about some of these issues and, and talk about it in a, uh, you know, hopefully a knowledge-based way or, or what have you. But there were some problems, minhajiyah there and istidlal, you know, and how you use the dili. We can't just say, you know, I could use when I was a new Muslim, just to give you a side, I used to think because I didn't have any idea. I was a college student too. So I used to make my own tafsir. I said, man, this shows that Islam is compatible with socialism. That's what I really believed. Because I didn't know anything about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was just a college guy in Seattle, in the university, doing my thing. And, you know, had all kind of things from my looking at the text. Wow, that oh, Islam shows justice. Well, that means, you know, this is how we see the progressive using justice as a means to actually uh, march and go forward with the LBGQ community. I think I got it right that time. So... I think there's a T in there. So anyway, I messed it up. But anyhow, we see that a lot of this is it's the istidlal, it's the faham, it's the understanding of the religion. So this is where I saw that the brother had mistakes, but you've made it a bigger problem. So now we have to deal with it. And so I see really, I don't know if there's a lot to say, because most of your comments, you you gave me no evidence. You just accused us of being like S-pubs. Fine, that's okay. You have an opinion. Uh, you said it's a waste of time. Fine. So it's a, it's a valid, uh, you know, it's, it's your opinion. Okay. Uh, you said that it was hateful rhetoric. You could say that as well, if that's what makes you feel good. And um, you said, you know, it gave a bad uh, impression for those, uh, you know, talking about feigning knowledge and all that stuff. So really all you made is a, a lot of interesting personal opinions. You gave me nothing from the book and the sunnah. So when we talk about ignorance, you should revise your comment probably take it down. I mean, I don't mind it being there. That's why I'm making a video on it. But to, to show. So let's go to your second comment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in you. Uh, and I think this is a greater one. This is one that I have more interest in that has more validity for me and I think is worth addressing. I wouldn't even say this, but you wanted to put it public on my comment. And 
you know, it wasn't like, you know, hey, brother, what do you think? Or, you know, this and that and the other. But you, you wanted to come out. So now you're out. Let's let's keep you out there. So you said S pubs are not close to us. Ahlus Sunnah. They are Ahl Bida 1000%. Anyone believes that they are not severe, uh, they are not, is severely deluded. Okay, that's your interesting viewpoint. Just because they are theoretically, verbally expressed to being on Salafiyah doesn't mean they are and their actions. Their entire cult is in clear opposition to Salafiyah as a whole. My brother Khalid, you're way off on this issue and you really haven't got this weighed up at all. Okay, S-pubs are the ones who injected the poison of division in this ummah, no doubt. History is clear. S-pubs are Juhayman al utaybi offspring, and you claim they're close to us is absolutely batil. Okay, that's nice. The scholars left Juhayman, and look what happened, and all you guys are doing is the same. Uh, leaving one of the greatest enemies to Salafia. All because you've been fooled by their theoretical claims to Salafi and therefore erroneously believe they are close to real Salafis, which is a joke. Wallahi, Salafis, you will deeply regret having sat on the fence about the cult of S pubs and you're silent complicitly and attacking those who expose the cult. You're endorsing evil and playing fence sitting upon clear battle. This is real mafsada. Your silent fence sitting minhaj and false claims that S pubs are close to us and not supporting those brave few who are exposing cult like Dr. Baker. Like, so first of all, I want to say Dr. Baker, uh, Abdul Haq, we're, we're very close uh, friends. And we, uh, you know, in fact, we could say we're colleagues in, in a sense in Sofa Um And so I have hold him in the highest regard. And what's beautiful this is what we learned. And let me just tell you something about Salafia, because I think you might have missed something in your studies. Uh, is that Salafia is so beautiful because Salafia is, is Islam. Imam Muqba, what do you say? Dawta ahlu sunna dawtun min kitabi la ila kitabi la wa min sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam ila sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The da'u of ahlu sunna is the da'wah from the book of Allah to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The beautiful thing about da'wah to Ahl sunnah for one, the hisbiyah, it, it doesn't matter. If you, anybody who's followed me and listened to me, they know that I've been doing this for years now on the YouTube because that's been the platform that's been available to me. I was in Saudi Arabia, so couldn't teach there. And just sharing some bits and pieces of knowledge and things I come across over the years. But... I think we could probably be, we should probably be fair in our assessment that I have not been a caller to myself, you know, and I've, you know, uh, and, and I, uh, I try to be strict on that because I realize that those are one of the biggest sifat of Hezbiyah. And many of the scholars, and we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Hezbollah, Hezbollah Shaitan, and, and so forth. So we don't, you know, for me, the popularity, I don't think I'll regret anything because people are hostile towards Salafiyah. They were hostile then, they're hostile now. I, I'm, I'm still going to be on what I'm on, is you know that I believe is the truth, and that I believe is in accordance with the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam. And I also got it from an informed uh, path, meaning I spent my wealth, I sacrificed my property. I honestly will say that even my family, I kind of pushed my family aside and went across the seven seas to Yemen and Saudi Arabia, no one took care of me, no one took care of me coming back. You know, I, I tried. Lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah knows best. So for me, it wasn't about calling to me and even what I share, it really isn't about the popularity for me. I know that I have mistakes and, and as, as Imam Malik said, Kulu yusibu yukhti ila sahiba hadha qabar. You know, Imam Malik was teaching the Haram, he said, everyone makes mistakes and everyone gets things correct except for the inhabitant of that grave. So that's not a problem. But you've made a lot of uh, claims about battle and this and sitting on the fence. So again, let me address that. I am not really concerned about the fence. I've kind of been working to tear it down for some years. Uh, secondly, Habitifillah, you have a real... Uh, I don't know if you're, what your view of economists mean, because I saw that one of the big 
uh, social media influencers posted on my thing when I said something about when I made a comment like this about this. I said they're closer to us, and he said they're you know they're you're saying they're better than Aquanim Muslimin. I'm saying yeah, they're better than Aquanim Muslimin, regardless of their mistakes, regardless of the issues of Hezbia. So that that's my view. I'm entitled to my view, and as long as my view is substantiated by Adilla, and I'm not here to defend and go into that necessarily because that's a bigger, bigger, broader issue. But you're entitled to your view. This is the beauty, like I said, why you should sit sit and seek knowledge. I don't know where you sought knowledge, but I'm just advising you that, you know, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, first and foremost, he said, a deen al-nasiha. He said, the religion is sincere advice. It means we should advise one another, especially when we have mistakes. So many of our scholars, my scholars, because I'm, I'm Salafi, sorry. Uh... My scholars have written a lot of books about this in contemporary times, which is coming from the books of the Salaf, you know, halas. Um, like our Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli wrote a book called Nasiha, you know, Ahl Sunnah, how they should deal with one another. Our, before that, Imam uh, Al Muhaddith, uh, Muhaddith al Jazirat al Arab, Kama Kala Sheikh Muhbil, uh, Imam uh, Abdul Masan al Abad, he wrote his book uh, Rifkin, you know, Ahl Sunnah should be gentle with one another, you know. And uh, our Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad Ali Imam in Yemen, he also wrote a nice book called Ibana, which is, a, is on the topic, but a little bit off. But he's also, yeah, it's, it's still related to the topic. The point is, is there's no problem Ahl Sunnah refuting and having differences. That's not an issue. And it doesn't take anything apart. Don't you know that Imam Malik and Imam Shafi, you know, these great Imams of Ahl Sunnah with Ma Jama'ah differed on so many issues. And they still maintained one another's status and respect. When I look at, for example, Dr. Abdul Haq on the issue of Salafi publications, he has a whole different perspective because he's on the ground. He has been there. I'm going to make my judge judgments. Anybody who knows Khalid Green knows he's going to make his judgments or try not so much on what everyone else is saying. People give me all kind of clips and this and that and the other, but it's what I listen to. I try not to go secondary sources because that gets you in trouble. Okay. I can only go with my experiences. So that's why I give my view. And I respect Dr. Huck, even if I disagree. And that takes nothing from away from our relationship. And I believe he he probably would articulate the same. He disagrees with me. And and that is really just a matter of left thee, I think. It's more of a um, semantics because I don't I don't see or see the value in calling them a, a cult. And I see that your SP leaks thing, which I don't go to but I think it's pretty much established to destroy them. I don't, I definitely don't agree with that. I don't agree. Even, even I don't agree with trying to destroy Yasser Qadi or Nu'man Ali Khan or any of these other people that I have personally spoken about. I would like to see all of them because they're very popular, have a very good effect on the whole world. Okay. People around the world like them, listen to them, hold them as to be scholars or whatever, I would love for each one of those to be on Ahl Sunnah. You know, to come back, come to the usul of uh, Ahl Sunnah, manhajiyya wa itiqadiyya and, and so forth. I would love that. I want good guidance for the for myself and the people. Okay? So, uh, so for me, I, I don't want to see them uh, destroyed because I see for other things. So I guess I'll get into just, I'll just touch on a few things of why. For one, there's no doubt that they have been teaching important books of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah for years. They have a lot of experience, regardless of whether you disagree with them. Even I think some of their enemies can uh, uh, can agree to that. I don't promote them at all, and I've spoken in general about them because I see this is just the tarbiyah. My tarbiyah was not just from my mother, but my tarbiyah came from uh, you know Sheikh Abdul Masan Al Abad. Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, Sheikh Suleiman Rahili, Sheikh uh, Abdul Razak Al Bedr, and this this is just I'm a, a product of that. So I see my imams in Mashaikh and Sheikh Salih Suhaimi and Sheikh Ali Nasser Fiqi that they were very careful. And I'll tell you a real story. I went to Sheikh uh, Ali Nasser Fiqi once, and I mentioned about uh, Sefer Hawali, or also it was Salman Oda. I said Sheikh, you know da 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 because of you know his takfir. The Sheikh blasted me. He blasted me. He put me on blast. But there was another sheikh there 
who is a beloved friend of mine, who actually spoke up and said, Sheikh, well, on, in such and such book, on page such and such, he knew all those issues because I wanted to ask this question and it was had to do with my research and about tikfir and about the hisbees and 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 you know and some of these other uh, uh, harakiin they're referred to as. So anyway, one thing I learned from that sitting is to be cautious with the tongue, even with your khusumat, even with those people you disagree with. Be cautious. So what's important is that we don't take things out of context. As far as the fetches, brother, I think we we kind of talked about it a little bit. Bilal, I think, and uh, and that. Uh, I don't believe we took anything out of context. And again, the whole crux of that thing wasn't really him. He he kind of ignited the fire. And there were some statements he made about the nation of Islam. I don't even think it... I don't know if you need to detail that too much. They're, they're a mushrik uh, organization. And the fact is, whether you disagree or not about working with them or to the extent you work with them or whatever the case may be, I think we have to agree they're on pure shirk, you know? I don't know. I don't know what else to say when it comes to Islam. You know, there, there really isn't an Islamic masla out there. There might be a social justice issue. You might live in the same neighborhood and you have to have protection with the nation so the women can walk through, Muslim women and their women too. Maybe you've got a pact and agreement with them. There, you know, there could be other dunyawi things, but religiously, but that's a little bit outside of what we want to talk about. So, so uh, like I said, S-Pub's first there's no doubt they have been and they continue to teach the books of the Sunnah. Secondly, they've also had uh, good ties with some of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. Okay? And regardless of all the, there's been mafsadan, there's been fatawa that have destroyed communities, there's been a lot of evil that has been spread and they'll be held accountable for that. You know, anyone who destroys and destroys things, they, they're going to be held accountable. But again, my view, even with all of that, is I could sit with one of those guys next to me Call in the Tawheed, if they would never do that. Before I could sit with an Akhwan and Muslimin or a Dio Bundy, no matter how nice he is and no matter how much tea, because I like I like coffee. So I could sit, you know, and I think Yasser Qadi likes coffee. I thought I mentioned, you know, I heard a clip and he was talking about Starbucks and stuff and he was drinking one. So I, I think a guy like that, I probably could really relate to. He's academic. We could drink our coffee together. But it's really issues. It, it, it's a more diniya that we differ so much on that will be very hard for us to be, I think, uh, really compatible uh, companions, you know, Dinia. okay? Their issues of Hezbiya, of calling to themselves, calling to only a certain group of Mashiach, speaking without knowledge and destroying the honor of other Mashiach and Muslims, not nah, those are Amaliyat that are, uh, you know, wicked uh, actions. But like I said, I believe they are closer to us. Because if you look at a scale, you cannot, I, I don't believe you can say the Ashidis are closer to us. I still don't see that. You know, those guys believe in the pillars of Iman like we believe in the pillars of Iman. They believe in the issue of Tawheed in the same way we believe the issues of Tawheed. Even if they have wicked actions and things like that. Even if you don't uh, agree with them. But, so that, that... Like I said, that's the second point is they're closer to us. The third point is that the problem is when you align yourself and you form an alliance, and I don't know anything about your Aqidah, Mr. S.P. Leaks. I don't know if you're a Quantum Muslimin. I don't know if you consider yourself a Salafi. I don't know anything about you. I don't know who's responsible for this, but I know you have a league of different brothers and people who support you and stuff like this. I know uh, Dr. Abdul Haq. Uh, also uh, maybe support you or you take from him. You know, I don't know what, what that exact relationship is. But this is the third point is the problem is when you want to see that void, you want that to destroy them and make that void. Meaning, as pubs, this is my personal experience, Regardless of how much I disagree with a lot of their ahkam, you know, a lot of our issues really have to do with, you know, it might be manners, it might be uh, how they make uh, issues of hisbia, okay, calling to themselves, calling to a few, uh, the way they, uh, you know, talk about individuals and belittle many scholars, one minute is, is an alim, 
uh, probably to keep out of Ulama, then the next day he's 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 Abdul Hadi or he's you know he's uh, you know whatever Muhammad bin Hadi and he's this or the Jordanians and all this kind of belittlement. Okay, so we totally disagree with that. But like I said, they teach those books. Those other people don't teach. The Ashadis don't do it. The Ubandis don't do it. Sufis don't do it. Uh, even a lot of people who claim Salafia, they don't do that. We see them, some of them are just entertainment dais. That's what they do. They're really good at entertaining you. And I'm not really into the balloons and stuff like that. I'm into the tarbiyah that I know, that I believe is the best tarbiyah because it's classical. It is according to, it's more in conformity with the book and the sunnah, and it's exalting the book and the sunnah, and it's taking it very serious. That's why you see my videos, you see thousands literally, and I'm trying to teach you something. Okay, I might have a little injection in there. You might see me shoot a snake here and there or do something like this. Even with that, I try to give you a hadith maybe or something with it. Okay, so it's not about just playing and entertaining. And what you see with those guys, they remind me. Whenever I see some of their extremism, it reminds me to go back to the books of the Salaf. It really does. I'm not lying, neither. That when I see... Because they will use to make their points, even if it's a point of hezbiya. And so we know they have kawaid and asul that are, are facet in that sense. You know, there's some kawaid, there's some principles that they come up with that they make mistakes in. Because those are hezbi kawaid. And what happens there still is they try to cloak it. So then that forces me to go back to those texts to say, whoa, they, that was kind of a nice argument the way he put that. Man, I need to go back to those Athar of the Salaf. And those Athar of the Salaf, they really, they just keep you in tune. You, you need that tune up all the time, really. Because with all the fitna and folda and craziness going on, and you see the people speaking ill about Ahl Sunnah, making tabdiyah and tafsik and takfir of Ahl Sunnah, you, you need that. You need that to remember, oh, whoa, 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 okay. Let me go back to Shara Sunnah. Let me go back to Shara Sunnah. Let me go back to Usul Sunnah. Let me go back to, you know, those books of the Salaf, those classical texts. And that really helps to feed you. So that is another positive that I see. This is not meant to weigh them, make muazana, but I'm just addressing your, your issue from my perspective. The last point I want to really make is even with your claim of there being a cult, and I know some other people, we know the people who wrote uh, the cult and this and that and the other, I've seen two problems arise. One is that the people are so focused on them and destroying them that they combine with everyone. So the basic, the new Qaeda, and it becomes like a principle. The new principle is we can all get together, like men, Aquanimus Muslim. We can all get together. We can excuse one another for what we differ over, but we all agree Salafi publications is bad. Let's destroy them. And I see so many people that are being called from these unified gatherings who go against the usul of Ahl Sunnah. All the time, they start talking about the books of Ahl Sunnah, those classical texts. So how can you unite with them? How can you unite with them? And who's really better? The ones who throw away and want to destroy the books of Ahl Sunnah so they can advance their Qutbis menhaj and their other Akhwana Muslimin menhaj and their other ideologies and their nationalistic agendas, which one is better, that or those people who have a lot of issues? It doesn't mean I, I'm going to cooperate. It doesn't mean we're working with them. But for me, I feel closer to them, even if they're extreme, because that means there's a path. Ahl Sunnah has a middle path. This is why you find, you'll find this. Go back to the books of Sheikh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah and others, and you'll see that they'll, they'll mention a lot of times that the Ashadis, Akrabilena. They're closer to Ahl Sunnah than a lot of the other sects. This is something I want you to learn in case you didn't know. And this is what the, also you'll learn from studying, you know, the scholars mention this a lot. Ahl Sunnah Tafawit, Ahl al Bid'ah Tafawit. Ahl Sunnah Tiwil Jama'ah, they have different levels. Ahl Bid'ah has different levels. So, meaning a person has Bid'ah and they have different levels of deviance. We don't classify. A person with bid'ah mukafara, like the person who has bid'ah ghayra mukafara. They're not in the same category. You can pray behind one, the other you can't pray behind. You can't pray behind someone who worships the graves. 
who says we seek re we seek refuge and, and help from the dead and from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kufr, kufr makhrajana millah. You can't cooperate with them. So the one who is bid'ah, ghayr mukafir is better than him. I hope you understand the point. Ahl Sunnah likewise. There are some people who have no knowledge, but they're from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Then there are some people who are tawailib al -ilm. They're small students. I'm not sure if I even fit into that category. I might be more closer to the awam, but I just sat with a lot of ulama. That's it. So that we got to be honest about. At least Khalid Green, he did sit with a lot of ulama. He's not a student of knowledge, but he did, alhamdulillah, I did, you know, so I can recite a few things and mention a few things. Then there is those that are students of knowledge. And then we have mashayikh. And they have different levels. And then we have ulama. And from amongst those ulama, we have rasikhuna fil ilm. Or perhaps they could even be in the scholars too, in general. So my point is, is there's different levels. Different levels of deviance and different levels of adherence to the sunnah. Right. So that's something very important. So this is what, so I said that I believe that they're closer to us than a lot of those other groups. I believe, no doubt. Then they are closer than the Jamaat Tablik. They're closer to us than the Jamaat Takfir wa Hijra. They're closer to us than ISIS. They're closer to us than the Khawarij. They're closer to us than Boko Haram. They're closer to, to us than the Mu'tazila. They're closer to us than the Asha'ira. They're closer to us than Juhayman and, and his, his cult. And they're closer to us than so many. Regardless of whatever ailments, they are Akrab Ilena. And you have a problem with that. That's okay. You're entitled to that problem. This is my last point. Is that you are falling into the same hezbiya that you're accusing Salafi publications with. Limadha. Why is Khalid Green saying that? Khalid Green is saying that. Habit al-Filah. Limadha. Li'anna. You at the same time cannot deal with someone differing with you. The statements you've said, regardless if you come out and say I'm a mubtadiyah. You've already called me. Let's see, what do you say? This is the real mafsada. So we've already gotten into the real mafsada. So we could just say, oh, Khalid Green, you just got into the real mafsada. You've done a lot of evil. You know, you've done a lot of spoiling of the principles of the Ahl Sunnah by this playing fence sinning on clear battle. So you're saying that I'm on clear battle. That means, that's probably got to mean bid'ah. I don't understand what other kind of battle I could be on. Either kufr or bid'ah. Or fisk, it's either one of those three when you're saying I'm on battle or I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. Because you said I'm on clear battle, sitting upon, I'm sitting on the fence on clear battle. So that means I'm hiding the truth from the people. Okay? This is a very serious accusation. That's very problematic. It's very serious. This is the real mafsada. Okay? Uh, your silent fence sitting minhaj. That, no doubt, I'm a mubtedia to you. You know, you've, you said it right there. My silent Fence sitting minhaj, because that means my minhaj is differing from the minhaj of the salaf, the one that I'm claiming, the one I'm striving to follow. So I have a new minhaj that we started. Maybe it's sort of like the, the people who made tawakkaf with the Quran, you know, because this is what you hear Salafi publications and others will say if someone is not clear on the issue. You know, they're not clear on the issue, which means you don't agree with us. That seems to me that you're pointing the finger at me, but those three fingers are coming back to you and you're saying, I'm not clear on the issue. No, in fact, I'm a propagator of batil. I'm a fence-sitting propagator of batil on a fence-sitting menhaj. Clearly, I'm from Ahl Bidah. Why even gauge me? I don't even understand why you've given me the benefit of doubt and, and, and benefited me with quoting on my YouTube. Really? I wouldn't do it to you. Doesn't mean anything to me. You know? Why am I saying that you've fallen into the same hezbiya? Because I believe that you more or less are aligning with all kind of people, just an eclectic group whose purpose is to just collect files to destroy uh, those guys. I don't see benefit because this is another point because I never saw this from my scholars. Now, there's some of them that are pretty, we know that are more vocal and more strong than others, no doubt. And they speak about people, and sometimes they, they have to retract that because they're more active like that. But most of my scholars from Yemen and Saudi Arabia, and there's a lot of them, I didn't learn that. They were just teaching us books. That's what I like to do. And Radin Ahl Bid'a when it when the maqam when it when it came to be necessary. Okay. And guess what? They I 
can't think of any of my scholars who forced us to have an opinion like you're forcing you want me to have. I've got to have your opinion. And in fact, this is an issue of ijtihadiyya even. This isn't something we're going to go back to the books and, and the salaf. What's the hukum of salafi publications? Cult or not cult? Even though we both have agreed that there's agreement, there's problems. We agree on the level of the problem. You can't accept that because that is a sifat of hizbi. I say you check yourself before you wreck yourself and make toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your, your wicked and false accusations. SubhanAllah, you are falling into the same deviance and wallahi, I, I, I will say now, because you said wallahi so many times. Let me say this now. I've seen it so many, so many times. We're not new to this. SubhanAllah. And I've seen it for years. I knew this. I watched it happen. This is just a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah made me awake to see this. I saw a lot of people growing, the growing hostility towards Salafi pubs. And I was not a promoter of them. I was not a propagator of them. I was not, I would talk in general about problems that I see in the Dawah scene, mainly for the Dawah of the youth. Those guys aren't going to listen to me. I'm nobody. I'm just a small guy. It, you know, they're popular. They have wealth. They have all this other stuff. I saw no maslaha because then this looks to the people, even if they, yeah, it looks like it's Salafi infighting. That's one. That's another thing. But the point is, I never saw my scholars. They never encouraged us and forced us to take a mokif like you have. I've only seen this from Hizbis. That is a pure Hizbi trait. So that's why I say you should make toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and really check yourself because you are doing the same thing you're doing that. You're forcing me, making ilzam of me in a thing we, even the funny thing is, is we almost agree to each other, but it's not enough for you. I'm fence sitting. I'm on battle. I have a minhaj of battle. That's deep. That's deep, man. You see that all the time. That's why you should never, subhanAllah, wallahi, I, that's why I'll say, wallahi, I never saw this from Imam Abdul Masin. That's what I'm going to be on. That Imam, I didn't see it from Imam Abdul Nasser al -Faqih. I met Fozan a few times. He was not like that. Imam Fozan, listen to his tapes, read his books. Go talk to him, ask a question of him. He's not like that. Lou Haydan, I met him one time. But so many scholars I sat with many times. Sheikh Obeid, I was under his beard for years. Sheikh Suleiman al-Haili for years, probably, I'd say five to six years. Sheikh Ibrahim al-Haili, no doubt, five to six years. So many people. They didn't force us. Even when their enemies were talking about it. SubhanAllah, during the fitna of Fadi al-Harbi. Fadi al-Harbi was banging on Sheikh Ibrahim al-Haili and Sheikh Suleiman and, and Sheikh Abd al-Zaq. And I was sitting with all them. And I didn't really know why, why he was, you know. And this is why S-Pubs was with them at this time. And a lot of students left some of those mashayikh at that time. They were all patient. They just kept teaching. And I was really sitting with Sheikh Ibrahim. We were going several days a week. He was teaching. So I was really made malazima of him. And he never. He only pointed to the fitness sometimes. And he just mentioned in a general way. For those people who were aware of what was going on and when the stuff hit the fan and Sheikh Rabi and Fale fell out and, and it became, and Sheikh Ibrahim said some beautiful words of wisdom. But he never spoke about him. He never defended himself. He only said, if you can find what people are saying about this, this mumaya, then bring it and we'll have a, he, he, he would give that as a, like a homework assignment to the Kibar of the lab. You know I mean, those students who were doing their PhD in Jama Islamiyah, like the Indonesians, some Nigerians and others at that time. That was their homework. Bring back where they're saying this book is Mumaya that we wrote and that we've been studying for two years. We sat with the Sheikh two years, 56 lessons. And we never saw what you're talking about. Nor do we see that from the Minhaj of the Salaf. Nor do we see that, dude, we study that in the book. You know, that you've made all these very harsh comments. So my advice, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all, protect us all, preserve us all, guide us all. Bless us with a class with the bad. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself to Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.